on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. We see on the group all the time where people are, oh, I'm stuck at 200 views. It's like, yeah, but that's still 200 yeah. people that know about your book today that didn't know about it yesterday. So don't be disheartened and, and keep keep doing what you're doing and you'll hit those audience numbers every day. And that's, that's phenomenal because it's not costing you a penny. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers, no more barriers, no one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome. It is The Self-Publishing Show with me, James Blatch. And me, Mark Dawson. Uh, hello, Mark. We are, uh, as we mentioned last week, a country in mourning. We've lost our beautiful queen, but we have a new king and we have a funeral, which is weirdly for us going to be, we think, taking place whilst we're in the air. Or, or maybe not, because the latest intel might suggest that they may delay some flights out of London on that no, morning I, anyway. I, yeah, I think probably be OK. I've uh, had a quick check. I just sent you something over on Slack, actually. Oh, OK. From the BBC, from Heathrow, that things we might be all right. But... um. Yeah, it's uh, you never know. It's got, it could be an interesting day all around. Yeah, well, well, I'm in London. Watching the oh. funeral off a dodgy airline Wi-Fi, I think, is the very best we can hope for. Yes, yeah, it would be nice to watch it live and share that moment with our nation and the world. I think seemed, the whole world seems to be very mm. uh, taken with um, with the Queen on reflection. And uh, I'm in London tomorrow, uh, not for um, to queue up because the queues are, I think several hours well at the moment it's 4.2 miles long and nine hours to get from the back to the front so um I mean, there's one thing about this <laughs> one thing about the uh what's happened over the last week or so is it's demonstrated that we are there, there really is no other country in the world that knows how to queue like the British. this is this is the queue we've been training for our whole lives yeah, absolutely this is the, the boss queue isn't it? at the end of the uh yeah end of the level um so when the Queen Mother died, they also she lay and stay in the same place in Westminster Hall. And at that time, my mother was alive and she was a member of the House of Lords. So we could sneak in wow. through the Lords and walk in and just it took us 10 minutes. Um, so sadly, my mother's passed away and I no longer have that connection. But that would have been definitely something that we would have done. But um, yes, anyway, so it's uh, it, we mentioned it last week. It's such a big global event and such an event for us and means a lot to us. So we make no apologies for talking about it briefly at the beginning of the show again. Um, however, if you want to talk to us in person and um, and raise a glass to the Queen or even us, you can do so tonight if you're listening to this at, at release time on Friday, because uh, this evening... At the time this is released, Probably. not now. Uh, we yeah, will be in, hopefully we'll be in Florida. Uh, we'll be at St. Pete Beach at the Trade, Trade Winds Resort uh, at a bar called the Shark Tooth Tavern. It's called Golf Boulevard. I always forget the name of the road. It's on the Golf Boulevard, is it? Something yeah, like that. something like that, yeah. Um, anyway, you would have find it. St. Pete Beach is not that big. And we'll be there um, probably from earlier than nine, but nine officially, what time we start, and we'll, uh, we'll have a beer. Come and say hello. It'd be lovely to see you tonight. I know there'll be a few people there who are at the uh, the NINC conference. Um, and what else to say? To say there is a blog available today on how to generate and test nonfiction ideas. That is available on our website, selfpublishingformula.com. And very excitingly, the next episode we record, Mark, will be our 350th episode, and it will be recorded live in front of an audience uh, in St. Pete Beach at Nink. So we're going to do that on the Friday night, I believe, on the Friday mm. night. Or was it Saturday night? I can't no, remember not, now. No, not Saturday. It must be Friday. Friday. Are you sure? It might be Saturday because the conference goes on to Saturday. It's one um, of the last things. Anyway, whatever. if you're if you're going and you've got access to it, you'll be able to look it up in your own program. You don't need us whittling on to tell you when. But it will be at Nink. We're going to record an episode. We're going to have uh, at least Dave Chesson as a guest. There'll probably be another guest as well, TBA. Uh, but it'll be really good to talk to Dave. Uh, he said yes straight away uh, to join us on stage. Are you looking forward to performing in front of uh, in front of an audience, Mark? Um, I'm not sure. I call it performing. Uh, we can uh, we can chat about books for a little bit and. And hopefully it's not too boring. But yeah, it'd be fun. Dave would be uh, good to have a catch up with him, see how he's getting on, and have to see who we who else we can rope in. Damon Courtney, perhaps he's always there. I think we had Damon last time, but we'll, um, mm, we'll not uh, on. We'll... No, we didn't. Not on. I, um... I'm gonna. I would like to reserve a slot because there's always one talk at Nink that everybody talks mm. about, 
uh, yeah. really grips everyone. So I think we leave that slot open and try and bring bring a bit of the, the spice yeah. from the conference forward. So, okay, right. So look, I think we can crack on. We have a really brilliant episode today and it is about my favorite subject. Uh, and I've been talking about it in my little WhatsApp reader groups today, or writer groups, I should say, uh, which is TikTok. And we have a guest called Adam Beswick, uh, AP Beswick, he writes as. And Adam is one of those people who took our TikTok for Authors course and oh my goodness, has he made it work. He's dedicated himself to it. He's absolutely nailed uh, TikTok. He's relentless in his uh, attention he gives it and the work rate and his inventiveness. Uh, he still works as a nurse, but I think not for much longer um, because he's just had his first five-figure month and he went from almost nothing uh, to this. And that's all through TikTok. And he's not a romance author. He writes in fantasy, he writes Robin Hood retelling uh, stories here in Asia. He's British here in the UK. Uh, so this is about how he's done that, what TikTok, how it works for them and how it can work for you. Let's hear from Adam and then Mark and I will be back for a quick chat. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Right, Adam Beswick, we meet at last. We are, I mean, I suppose for about 15 years, we've been used to knowing people virtually and then meeting in real life occasionally. But this feels very much like we kind of know each other because we've dealt a yeah. lot over TikTok and in the groups. And here we are, still not quite face to face, but not far off. No. Well, welcome no. to the show. Well, Thank you. Thank you very much. It's really nice to uh, be on. This has been on my bucket list for a long, long time. Well, um, you stood out because you were somebody who really took to TikTok and it's uh, such a you know, growing and important, influential platform for authors. I want to explore what you've done, how you've done it, and particularly talk about the kind of the shop aspect of it, which I know you've been getting your teeth into recently. Yep. Yep. Okay. So why don't you start, I'll tell you what, before TikTok, tell us a little bit about Adam Beswick, the author. Okay, so I started writing um, properly, as it were, um, in 2018. Um, me and my wife had been up to Edinburgh uh, for a weekend away from the children and um, just felt really inspired. I've always felt that I had a, a story in me and um, on the way back, Mrs. Bez fell asleep on the train. So I just spent three hours jotting this idea I had down for a story. Um, and it kind of grew from there and slowly, slowly took over my life writing, writing my first, my first book, which came out in November, uh, sorry, December uh, 2019. Um, Perry J.K. Rowling, isn't it? Up in Edinburgh, Santa Cafe. And yeah. She, yeah. So she, we, she did quite well. Yeah. So we'd done all the sites. We'd, we'd been to see all the, the Elephant Cafe and um, all the all these places that, that that gave the inspiration for Diagon Alley and, and places like that, um, and it just yeah it just kick started uh, an idea, um, and thought well let's if you you get nothing from not trying so just thought I'll do it so um, I work um, I I'm a nurse um, so it was very much writing around family routine work routine. Um, which became kind of writing for an hour most most mornings um, as best as I could. Um, and then I'd finished that first manuscript after about five months. Um, I uh, started documenting my journey on Instagram, which was my first kind of social media platform um, where I, I specifically used that for um, writing a book from scratch. So if you go onto my Instagram, you'll see my very first posts where I've, I've wrote about 8,000 words overall when I, I think when I, when I took my first photograph on there, right through to my book, my first book being released, my second book being released. Um, and uh, there was an author on there, Serene Connolly, who um, really became a mentor for me. Um, she put me in the direction of 20 books, um, Craig Martell, you guys, and then kind of watching all your videos and listening to your podcast just consumed me for quite a long time um every time i was driving anywhere i had a podcast on um trying to find well trying to learn how to self-publish a book whilst i was writing my book because um, that was always the avenue i wanted to to go down just because of the creative freedom you get from it yeah and fantasy is what you write yeah so my, my first series was urban fantasy so again it was very harry potter-esque um so magic system but set in a modern world um 
which the, the difference being my world was set in kind of north northwest England, so very much bringing in that northern culture, um, which I had, real, had a lot of fun doing, and I, I was kind of trying to integrate real-life history because um, there's a lot of Mayan culture and mythology within the within the concept. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that, that just became a real passion. Um, enjoyed it a lot more than... I thought I would. Um, obviously, it has its stressful days. And then by the time that book came out in the December 2019, I'd already written the the manuscript for the, the second book. Wow. Um, and then um once I'd finished that second book, um I was I was I was getting stuck on my third. So I I'd um I'd, I'd been um I, I was inspired to write a Robin Hood retelling. Um, as it were. So um, I thought I'll take a break from a first series just because what I was writing, I wasn't happy with. Um, so in between finishing that that urban fantasy series, I, I wrote uh, Forest of Vanity and Valor, which is my book that's um, become really popular. And you started on Instagram blogging this this journey. We're not supposed to use the J word. Um, <laughs> that's That was an interesting moment because you hadn't really tuned into the rest of self-publishing of that that's you just thought this would be a useful thing to do did you just do it because you thought this would help sell the books or did you just do it because it was an interesting thing to do yeah just because it was something different so I, I always used my my social medias for different things so my, my facebook page is kind of family and friends orientated give updates you know like everyone does pictures of your your kids and family and gatherings and things like that um i use my twitter for football related things for my sins I'm an Everton fan so I um I use Twitter for that and then Instagram um I just you know, like I said I'd, I'd been writing the the first draft for about two months or so um and in that time I'd written 8,000 words and which was massive to me at the time yeah um and thought I need to find a way to kind of chronicalize this so I can look back on it um and absolutely unbeknown the the world out there and the, I've got people that I'd consider very good friends now and I still, I've never met them in person, but they've they've literally followed me all the way through, supported me, guided me, cheered me on from the sidelines. Um, and and Serene, who who I do consider a mentor, she she still pops up. But like when when I put updates on and how my books are doing, um, those those messages and just saying how proud of me she is, and to see mm. to see how far I've come, and it it means a lot. Which is crazy when it's someone you've never you've never actually physically met. Yeah. Um, that you can build that kind of mentor relationship with someone. It's the is the modern way, isn't it? So you wrote those three yeah. three books originally, and then the um, Forest of Vanity and Valor was that the that was the and is that a series as well? That's a three book series. Yeah, well, that's going to be a multi book series. I've got okay. quite ambitious ambitious plans for it. So um, that it is at the moment. I've got four stories planned. For the main series and then a fifth book which will kind of bring all the characters together from the first four books a bit a bit like avengers um each story in the book serves as a origin story based on a british folklore legend um but it is dark fantasy so it's a completely new world completely new names um aside from one character um and then just kind of blending all british mythology into one place um, and and people seem to really like that. Um, I get a lot of really positive feedback about the twists that I've done on the tales because I try and do it in a way that hasn't been done before. So although you'll see the traditional tropes in there, the, the twist that I'll do will be putting it from a, a different angle um, that hopefully pe- people enjoy that. Um, and that's certainly been, been the evidence so far. Yeah. Uh, you're from the Northwest, obviously, I can hear a yes. little, little bit of that. Uh, Maybe Merseyside. You said that you're an Everton fan. Is it Merseyside? Or? No, yeah, I'm no, I'm nowhere near Merseyside. That's a family link. So my family are from, are from that neck of the woods. Um, I live in a, a quaint town called Ozzle Twizzle. Ozzle Twizzle. That yes. sounds like that's been made up by J.K. Rowling. It does. It certainly does. Um, so the focal town in my my first series. Um, I named Oswald after Oswald Twizzle, um, and it, it was going to be called Oswald Twizzle, but I just thought there's, there's too many people won't be able to to pronounce this. Yeah. 
this name. Um, so yeah, um, that's what I've, I enjoy with that series because there's little nods to things in in the in the town. Yeah. Um, yeah. We often think of the regions being important in um, you know regional detective sort of yeah. modern day things, but actually there's no reason why you can't create a you base a urban fantasy on it. I suppose it's actually yeah. quite uh, Shane Silvers is famously St. Louis I think uh, all his books so um, okay so you've written these two series you've cracked on I mean you've really cracked on since 2019 you must be uh, quite a disciplined writer I'm going to guess um, I have my moments I've I caught Covid last September um, and up until then I, last year was I, I didn't release any books last year but I did all the legwork so, so far this year, I've released three books, but that's because of the work I did last year. Um, and then since September, I really struggled with COVID fatigue. So my routine was, I was in a really strict routine where I'd be up at half five, go to the gym, get home from the gym, do some writing, and then get the little one ready for work, uh, for, work for school. <laughs> my wife would go to work, get her ready for school, then I'd go to work, and then... By the time I'm home, I just wouldn't have any energy to write. Um, and it's kind of, my, my routine's kind of flipped on its head now. So um, I tend to write when I find I have those those moments um, and that and that time. Um, but I am trying to get into a better better routine at the moment. So I've, I've been back at the gym for the last few weeks. Um, I had to take a break from December because I tore a muscle in my stomach. Um, and that affected me quite a lot. Um, mm. in, in in that sense of that routine. So it was kind of like my gym routine went out the window and so did my writing routine because I wasn't following that that pattern that I'd, I'd kind of got used to. Um, and then this year, because I've had three book releases, um, I did I ran a Kickstarter early early on this year. Um, I've had audio books produced. I've had hardback books produced for the books I've already made. It's been really busy outside of writing and because I am I still work as a nurse as well so I've still got my job to juggle so yeah it's it's managing that time um, but I've still managed to write I've got a story that's coming out in December that I wrote in January um, and I'm about two-thirds of the way through the third book in um, my dark fantasy retelling series. Mm, that long Covid is a, a menace isn't it and I hope it's um... yeah uh, there's a full recovery uh, from you, get that mojo back. But on the other hand, it did sound like you were doing a lot. I don't know how long you can sustain getting up at five in the morning, looking after young children, yeah. working a nine to five job and not even a nine to five job as a nurse and writing. But anyway, I'm sure you're, you're finding that balance. Um, and then at some point, TikTok came along for you. Yes. When, uh, when did that start? So I've, um, again, through the SPS, um, group that we've got from the I started the 101 course uh, I think two years ago now um, and I put a, a, a request on there about um, needing help with formatting a book and uh, uh, Rob Radcliffe uh, kindly offered to help me format my book um, and then we've become really good friends again since 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 then um, I probably speak to him just as much as my wife at the moment, we're on regular contact. Um, and he know he knew that I hate hate videoing myself, hate hate photographing myself for social media, things like that, hate talking on camera. Um, and he he kind of said, Well, there's this TikTok challenge, I'm gonna give it a go. Um, there's a there's a group on which is the SPS the TikTok for authors group that you you guys set up. Um, so he he kind of invited me to join that. Um, and we both set off kind of doing doing videos every day um, and I just got became obsessed with it straight away. So I started in January, I think it was the 6th of January, something like that, um, and just haven't, haven't looked back since. I've just, it's just got stronger and stronger every single month. Yeah, it's funny you say that you're not, you don't like the video aspect of things, but you have taken, yeah. taken to it like a fish to water, just pushed yourself yeah. into it. I think that a key for TikTok, uh, most social media, I guess, but TikTok in particular, because it is content, 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 is just doing it at the beginning, just pushing yourself, even if you yeah. feel uncomfortable. And at some point, it starts to become more comfortable, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. If you if you go, because obviously all my old videos are on there. Um, if you have the patience to scroll through, I'd, I'd try to think how many videos are on there now. But um, you, 
you can basically see that I, I physically could only just hold my camera. I was shaking that much. Um, and that was with ones that I weren't even, I wasn't even talking. Like it was using using sound bites and stuff, and I still couldn't couldn't hold my camera because I was that nervous just to just to film myself. Um That amazes me watching you now. Yeah. You've come a long way then. Yeah. Yeah, well and, and you've got to you've got to push yourself. I mean, I know people that try just and work just as hard as me on it. They just, they just haven't had that break, and I see it as a lucky break that kind of everything aligned. My book cover, the sound of the type of music that I'm using, um, the the interest, the themes, it, it just aligned at the right time. Um, but what I found was, you know, my my first video that I was like, I've gone viral had three thousand views, um, and that was people were drawn to the fact that I was also a nurse, and I got a few comments. So for a few weeks, I was posting that I'm a nurse and an author and generating links through there. Um, and then um, people were then focusing on the book cover because um, I was trying all my books at this stage, but they seemed more drawn to my uh, Robin Hood retelling. Um, and that released about just over a week after I joined TikTok. Um, so I started posting videos of that book and then saw that that was gaining momentum. Then I did a, another video where... Um, uh, because I was on a business account, I was really lim limited to what music I had. Um, so I did um, kind of a bit of an intro to the work I was doing with a bit of rock. It was a Disney rock muse song, I think, for Mulan. Um, and that that got, I think, 20,000 views. And I was like, this is amazing. And then focus on, right, that that strategy was working. So then I'd keep, I just kept, kept tweaking it. Um, you know, some and then what I found was some videos work, some videos don't, um, and and I didn't lose any sleep if a video didn't take off. I still posted two, three times a day, just kept trying new things. So I, I was trying voiceovers, uh, lip syncs, trying a, a bit of comedy, author life things. So I was doing one video a day, author life, one video where it was like marketing my book, and I was finding all my sales were coming from America. So I was needing to post at like half nine ten o'clock at night and then in the morning i'd see if a video took off um and then that i think it was april i had my first video that that kind of blew up as it as it were and i think that that got around five hundred thousand views um so I'd, again what i've done there is I, i'd seen that my first book had been getting a lot of positive praise around the cover and people being really drawn to the cover um my second one, I'd already had my book cover made. So I, I spoke to my wife and I thought, I just said, I'm, look, I'm, I've got an idea. I want to kind of produce a few book covers um, to kind of so people can visualise the series rather than doing a cover reveal as each book is coming out yeah. and kind of project this is what I'm going to be doing over the next year. Um, and I think it was about a week later after those covers had finished being made um, that I got this 500,000 views and that had paid for the, from my sales that covered the costs of all my book covers that I'd had made. Have you been able to quantify the relationship between views and sales? Um, I haven't I haven't really tried um, gathering that kind of data um, because what works for me so the, there's an author um, again you, you've probably come across her, Emily Blackwood mm. Um, and, and she released a new book in, I think it was at the beginning of May or the or beginning of June, one of those months. And she, I think it was about $17,000 that she, she made. Um, and what was kickstarted that was a 500,000 view video. Um, and those sales far exceed what, what I've done. Um, I might I'm saying the journey word um, mm. so far, but it's, it's a different genre. Um, yeah. And I think it's very much genre specific um i think obviously your, your romance novels your fantasy romance novels get a lot more a lot more traction which we all know um i think my books are kind of proof that you can you can do it outside of that and i've had a lot of authors reaching out saying that they've followed my style they've, they've been calling it the Beswick method yeah <laughs> which i found quite funny i think and i think you um, do have a style i think there is a the, you know it's a very instantly recognized but i want to talk to you about the content creation in a second in the ideas yeah. and so on but i noticed that um you know people don't always understand this on twitter 
it operates to, first of all, I don't think Twitter's commercially useful for anybody, but in terms of people who have big accounts, they do get a fairly consistent level of views, retweets, and so on. On TikTok, I mean, you're very, very successful on TikTok, uh, but you, a bit like me, you'll get 250 views on one video, 3,000 on another, 240,000 yeah. on another, yeah. 13,000, and it's very difficult to tell. I mean, I guess you probably don't even know when it's going to happen and when it's not going to really get traction. Yeah, well, and, and that's again where it's trying to find what, what works and what the, my two videos, the, the one that went viral, I, I, I'd had an idea for filming it, how to do it. I just never got round to and then I forgot about it. And then someone had posted in the um, in the TikTok group saying that they'd used this sound and they'd gone viral. And then I remembered the style of video that I had in mind and thought, well, I've, I've tried this sound before and it, it just didn't didn't take off. Well, you get nothing for not, not trying. So yeah. I'll just try it again, see what happens. Um, the difference was this one went viral in the UK first. So I posted it around lunchtime. Um, and then... Uh, all through the day, I was just checking, thinking this is getting some traction here. But, you know, lots of people were commenting, but it was all book related. It was all people discussing the actual content that I'd put on. Um, so what I'm finding is they, they seem to be gravitating when there's a bit of a story to how that series. So I kind of say a quick story as to how this series came about and then transitioning to revealing all the book covers, but with some trending music or sounds um, and, and the transitions are all kind of on the beat of the music. Um, and my two videos that have done the best have kind of followed that that method. So that's something I'm certainly going to kind of look at a bit more and and kind of reciprocate those kind of videos um, because I think people do like the idea of, yeah, there's I've got two books in the series out now. I've also got two short stories that link to that world. But there's also a couple of books for September and April that are due to come out for people to look look forward to. Um, the, my issue at the moment is I'm not able to uh, kind of get the books out faster than what the audience want. Yeah. Um, but again, two three years down the line, it'll be it'll be a different a different story because there'll be the, the back catalogue of, of stories. Do you um do you watch particular other accounts for inspiration, or do you just does it come naturally, these ideas to you? Um, I, I tend to just scroll. I know there's a lot of people that they, they become obsessive with what's on the TikTok, and I haven't really taken that approach because ultimately TikTok's there to enjoy it. So sometimes I'll be watching something that's not book-related, but it'll inspire me to yeah. do a video within my genre, or there'll be a sound bite straight away. As soon as I hear it, I'll know that that sound will connect with the audience because it's the it's the type of music for some dark fantasy and, and rock any form of rock cover seems to convert really well um and then i think it's just about finding that video that's been posted at the right time so i i'm not afraid to post the same kind of video over and over again um i think it was may or june i did a bit of a test where for two weeks solid i didn't use hashtags and I, I just churned out the same content and it was it was monotonous, it was really boring. But I was like, no, I'm, I'm trying to market my book. And what I was finding, that even though I had 30,000 followers, it was still 97, 98% of my views were coming from the For You page. Yeah. So I was I was like, I need to be marketing for them whilst using my stories to kind of keep, keep the people that are following me engaged. Um, and publishing ideas and trying to say, look, is there, is there a retelling that you'd love to see me interpret and put into this world? And, and people just fire back with loads of comments because it is about creating that that engagement with your your audience. But yeah, fifty thousand followers now. But like you said, I still I, I post a video and might have five six hundred views. I don't I don't panic. I just think, well, actually, if you put that into context of what does six hundred people look like in a room? Yeah, and um, that. That's a huge audience, and I'm getting that audience multiple times a day um, through 15, 20 seconds. You know, it doesn't take me long to film some of these videos, um, and it's it, it's getting that audience. You know, if you if you sit a thousand people in a room, if you, if you were to get up on stage in front of a thousand people, you'd kind of be like, "Wow, this is insane." 
And because you're not physically seeing the amount of people, people can be really disheartened. And we see it on the group all the time where people are like, oh, I've only got, I'm stuck at 200 views. It's like, yeah, but that's still 200 yeah. people that know about your book today yeah. that didn't know about it yesterday. So don't be disheartened and, and keep keep doing what you're doing and you'll hit those audience numbers every day. And that's, that's phenomenal because it's not costing you a penny. No, and thank you by the way for being a part of that group, an important part of it. And if yeah. you're not, if by the way you're not a member of that TikTok for Authors Facebook group, it is one of the most vibrant parts of the SPF community at the moment. I, I love it in there. We've got thirteen and a half thousand members, I think, now and, and growing. And it's interesting for me. It, it's obviously there's a massive overlap with SPF, but actually, there's a significant number of people in that group aren't really part of the wider SPF community, may, maybe no. not even the wider self-publishing community. But they come in there, and you can tell that from some of the questions they ask fairly yeah. basic self-publishing questions but i quite like that about the group that it's got yeah. its own momentum going there um and definitely uh check out ap beswick on, beswick on um on tiktok see those ideas i see one of your videos probably that one you were talking about the robin hood idea 1.5 million views now yes which is, um, which is as I many as i've got on one of my videos so you know <laughs> yeah. i'm in the 1.5 million um, club <laughs> it was um that with that video when it got to the end of the it was kind of end of the day i, I was led in bed messaging rob radcliffe as i do um, and i was like i was just telling him i was like this video's got like nearly two hundred thousand views like this this could this could be the one yeah. um and then i woke up in the morning at four hundred and fifty thousand, and then my day was just engulfed with frantically trying to reply to every mess every comment every yeah. message that came through just engaging with people like, answering the questions um, and just trying to sit, come across as genuine because I am, I'm, I, you know, yeah. I, I want people to enjoy the story. Um, lucky in the sense of not too many trolls, not too many people attacking me. Um, I've had one or two people attack me in reviews of a book, um, mm -hmm. which again, uh, support from my friends, like for how to manage that and actually look that you've got a lot more positive comments coming in around the book. You, I was, I was getting, I got really drawn on the these two particular reviews but one of them was kind of character assassinating me oh. um not just my book so and i took that really personal but i've kind of look, kind of learned how to manage that now yeah um so um comment wise on the video it was tremendously positive and an insane amount of people tagging netflix tagging amazon you need to turn this into a movie you need to take turn this into a tv series this will be amazing um, I've still not heard from them, but fingers crossed. Yes. Um, that that would be amazing. That, um, but well, just... It wouldn't surprise me if TikTok is, has probably already been the place where something's been optioned for, for film and TV. So yeah, uh, it's definitely a platform to people who've got eyes on. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I say this when I do my presentation on TikTok at conferences, is that uh, with all social media, you need a thick skin. There's people out there, and I, I get it on my posts, particularly the plane spotting world, they can be quite... Some some people just don't like anybody trying to tell them anything yeah. that they think they know. So they routinely, I get quite negative comments on mine. Yeah. I mean, they're always the minority, but inevitably you... Yeah, they 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 sometimes hit home. I don't let anyone know they hit home, but um, not hit yeah. not hit home. That's the wrong thing to say. They hurt a bit, but um, including some personal comments about my appearance, which uh, you know I know yeah. um, it's, just, it's it's crazy that people would feel the need to do that. And I think yeah. women, I know from my time in t TV, women get this much much worse than blokes do. But I do get yeah. rid of it as well. So um, anyway, so so check out Adam. So and and how many posts a day do you do you aim for? Um, I try and do two, two minimum. Okay. Um, normally, any time between eleven and one tends to. You think that's the best time, time for you? Time. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm finding that uh, you know the research I'm doing is it, it's based on your time zone, not. So if it, eleven o'clock is a good time to post for me, it's just as good a chance of being eleven o'clock in other countries as well. Okay. So don't aim for. 11 o'clock UK time, aim for 11 o'clock your time if you want to try that. Um, and again, anywhere between half seven and, and kind of half nine. Um, sometimes I'll post two. If if I've managed to film a few TikToks, I might post three, four, five on some days. Um, but they tend to be the ones that have, have literally taken me a matter of minutes to put together and I'll, because I can just churn a few out quite quickly. Um, but if, if it's a new video with a new sound, I'll kind of leave that for a good few hours just to see yes. how it how it develops. Because it's some, what I found is if you post again too early, 
if another video is picking up, it can kind of stop. It does exactly. Start the traction. I, I wasn't yeah. sure if that really happened, but I tested it the other day. Yeah, so yeah. I had a video that started picking up and it got to about 13 and a half thousand views. And I posted yeah. another one specifically about my book. And the, f the first one was more yeah. aviation wise. And the aviation one has stopped at that 13.6. I'm sure it was still yeah. moving. So, um, yeah, I think uh, other people have noticed that as well. It can sort of cannibalize your, your views. Um, yeah, do you batch record then? It makes it sound, maybe you put them into drafts. There's something you can do in TikTok. You can stick it in the drafts folder and then and go back to it later. Or do you just do them and post them straight away? Um, it's just become part of my daily routine. So it tends to be a 10 minute thing in the morning where I'll, I'll get ready. And then once I'm dressed, and it tends to be when um, my daughter's getting dressed, she's getting herself ready for school. And then I've got kind of 20 minutes where I can. I can get us both ready um, for the day, and then I'll I'll kind of quickly film one or two TikToks. Um, if if I only have time, I'll I'll film one, and then I'll just film another one later on that that day. But um, yeah, I'll just I'll just get up, go into the back room, film film a quick TikTok, post it, and then it's done. And in terms of the technical side of things, how how's your setup? Do you have a, a hold of your phone, and uh, um, do you have sound, different a bit of mic equipment, or anything? Uh, no, I've got mic equipment now, but, but that's just because I've got it for this right. interview. Um, I have a ring. I had a very basic ring light, and the majority I tend to film holding the camera. Um, but I, you know, there's sometimes if I'm trying to do one where I'm talking a bit more, I'll I'll try and sit down. But I find it's more natural if I'm just holding it, and I, I'm not good at what I'm finding is if I'm trying to film myself explaining something that's going on. If it's a if it's a minute long video, I'll need to fil film it in like multiple sections yeah. because what I'll find is I'll get thirty seconds in, I'll start to stutter, and then I'll have to start from scratch. So I found I can film them quicker if I just film them in little snippets. But then I'll kind of move around the house or outside while I'm doing it, just so that it's a change in scenery. And um, because again, that that promotes good good engagement from people watching. Yeah, and and we always say that TikTok is um, it's a short attention span. So there's not the, the ums and ahs and long introductions don't work on TikTok, and that's why that editing is a very useful thing yeah. to keep everything yeah. tight. Yeah, definitely. I think you've got about three seconds to to get people in. Yeah, um, I suspect it's less than so, one in reality. Just from my yeah, my own experience of, of scrolling, yeah. I think probably it's somewhere between three quarters of a second and one second that people yeah. probably, on average, move on if they're not going to watch it. But yeah. it's worth bearing in mind. And, yeah, and that's where I think the trending music comes in. Yeah. Um, because that will capture people's attention first, yeah. then they'll read the text. And if you've got them by then, if, if you transition to a quick cover reveal, then, um, you know, you've more chance of connecting with that person. Um, but, you, you know, you've got to have it backed up with a, a good-looking cover that's going to appeal to people and appeal to your your genre, which then gives them the urge to go and, and, and follow up and, and purchase the book or read the book or borrow the book, whatever whatever way so you're I, reading it. I tend to sit down when I do my own. I might start, I might, actually I did one standing up today, but I normally sit down. I've just bought this just off Amazon there. If you're watching on YouTube, you see it's a bendy, <laughs> bendy thing. <laughs> it's like a sex toy, but it's actually a holder for my, um, my iPhone. And uh, yeah, it's clamped to the desk and you can put it anywhere. So you can have your phone literally looking down at you or looking up at you. But I bought that for like 15 quid off uh, Amazon. So we'll see how that, I get on with that. Um, everyone's going to now go to YouTube to see what that looks like because of the description I gave it. But uh, there you go. And that's how you grab people. Um, good. Well, do you do anything else in terms of like Facebook ads or Amazon ads? Are you pushing your books with paid advertising? Um, I've, I've stopped doing Amazon ads at the moment just because I can't. I just can't get them to work. And I'm, the amount of time I'm putting into it isn't reaping any rewards. Um, but also what I found at, at my last try, I, I think it was targeted categories. Um, so I took that approach, but then what I found was a video would take up, take off on TikTok. They'd then go to um, type in a forest of vanity and valor, but then there was a sponsored link appeared for my book and they were clicking on that. So I, I was paying for people to go to an ad that I've already sent them. Yes. I've already done the hard work. Yeah. Um, and so I've, I've kind of fell out with it at the moment. But um, I think all I need is to 
sit down with someone who can f- literally go through it with me so I can just make sure it's done yeah. it's done properly. Um, I've been running um, the Facebook ad for about two months now um, that I've been testing. Uh, that started off at £5 a day. Uh, I think that's currently at £15, 15 pounds a day, and I am looking to, to increase that budget now. Um, that I've got two two months, I've done two different ad sets, so just seeing which one converts best, um, and that that's doing okay. Um, but again, because of my TikTok, it's hard to quantify what's yeah. what's converting. Um, so yeah, I think I'll just just keep tweaking the Facebook ads at the moment because I, I know I'm getting a, a slight return on that, and then that's just about increasing that budget and seeing. If my my um, my sales increase, so I'm kind of waiting for my sales to plateau, which it, it is now. And um, following that viral uh, post in mid August, um, things are plateauing. So I can I didn't want to up my budget when I couldn't quantify if that was converting or not. So I've got four or five days now where I've been kind of generating the same amount. So it's it's probably the next couple of days I'll I'll increase that budget and then I can I can monitor how that how yeah. that improves. Well, it's great. I'm really impressed with you, Adam. And um, the latest thing that uh, that you've started pioneering is is the ability to sell your books through TikTok. So there's a TikTok shop, which sort of I mean, everything moves fast on that platform. It sort of emerged during the summer, didn't it? And then you, books were introduced, yeah. and I think you spoke to a rep about this. So how how did that come about, and how's it going? Um, it's quite funny, really, um, because I. I'd been on a with me and my colleague at the time. We had quite a long commute to a work meeting. I think we were in the car for about four hours, um, and on the way, I'd said to her that, um, I've, I, you know, this, these TikTok shops is great. It'd be amazing if I could sell my books directly on there. Um, and literally two days later, I had an email um, in my inbox uh, from a, a, a representative from TikTok um, saying, um, you know, we think there's a big, there's a big my untapped market for books on TikTok. Um, uh, would you like a Zoom meeting just so we can talk to you about how 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 you could sell your books through TikTok? Um, so obviously, I was this is this is too good of an opportunity. All the usual questions like is this spam? Is it a hoax? Um, but sat down, had the meeting. He kind of before the meeting, he kind of sh- showed me all his credentials to to kind of verify it was from TikTok. Um, and then he walked me through kind of creating a seller account um, to sell any item on TikTok, um, which I can do. But then he showed me how to create your own product to sell on TikTok. Now, selling my books directly, you know, it, 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 I'm happy with how it works with Amazon and my royalties through that. So I just thought I just want to focus on sign copies and see, and see how that does. So he explained it's only in the UK that it's available, but what they can do is load your shop with vouchers so people can get money off um, buying copies, but also TikTok for a period of paying for the postage and the delivery costs. Um, so I thought, well, I can I can sell a signed copy for twenty twenty pounds. I've got I've kind of proved that over the last few months. But if people can then get that without paying the postage and without with a five pound off voucher, they can get a signed copy of my book for fifteen pounds delivered to the door within a day or two. Um, so again, tried a couple of posts, set it all up, um, and then just I think there was one a video. I, I, um, the, the representative said to me, "Just talk on camera because that'll convert better." So I did a really brief video, just saying, "Look, we've got a TikTok shop. Just trying it out. There's limited stock." Um, and I posted it at lunchtime on my dinner break, and by the time I got home, that had generated about three hundred pounds in in sales. Um, so, so, so how, how does this work? What pe- people click on a link and and they obviously make <laughs> yes. their purchase. I hand their credit card information over. Or the, you know, TikTok shop deals with that. But in terms of fulfilment, what actually happens? Yeah, so you've got to be prepared. So I had to set. Up, I had to have physical stock. So this is why I did it limited at first. I thought I, I only had a few books at my house. So I thought I'll I'll do them as a test, see how it goes, and then follow the process to make sure there's no snags. Um, so you need to have your packaging material. You need access to a printer, um, so you can print all the labels and things like that. 
um, and you you need to um, you know I I put bookmarks and little extras in like little bits of artwork as a fancy see maps things like that as a, as a thank you for people when they make purchases, um, and then you've got three days from the order being placed to post it out. So you have to make sure you're checking it regularly, yeah, and um, making sure you're fulfilling them order the orders on time because you it's almost like you've got a TikTok credit rating. Um, so if you're underperforming, they'll suppress who's seeing your videos that are advertising your, your shop. So I, I can post videos now, and on the video, there'll be a little basket link. And when they click that, they'll see, whilst my video's still playing, that they can they can buy physical copies of my books, um, which I think is a really good tool. Um, I just made a, a mistake on one video because I'd put... Um, if, if you've seen that my tagline was, if you've seen this without a hashtag, then this is your next... Your, your next read but then I, it was one of my first ones i did i didn't realize that tiktok added a hashtag oh. saying add at the bottom oh. um because i put a link to my book and yes. then people started jumping on me saying uh there's a hashtag yes. and i was like yeah. i'm really sorry um and then about two months later uh, about a month later sorry that video suddenly got loads of views um and i got loads of sales just randomly coming through my tiktok shop so without really pushing it and just kind of seeing how it goes, I've, I've, I've yeah, I've about eight, eight, nine hundred pounds um, really? that's generated. And is so, that, do you get an email or do you have to go into TikTok to check? Um, it could be a bit hit and miss. Sometimes I'll get an email saying you've got an order and I'll click in and there'll be like eight orders in there. Um, but you, again you just get in the habit when you're checking your dashboard just you can you just log into your seller account and it'll tell you any orders that are in and yeah. what's due but the emails do tend to what i've found is if because you've got three days at some point in those three days you'll get an alert message from tiktok shop saying you've you've got orders um just to remind you and i think that has slowly got better okay. and i think initially that was just their, their system's getting set up to, to I was, kind of i was just asking remind for, you. trying to think about automatically fulfillment or outsourcing the fulfillment because ultimately yeah. i mean i do the same as you i do signed copies at home and i print yeah. and, and and envelopes off um yeah. off amazon but in an ideal world you set that up and the email would go somewhere else and somebody else would forfeit it for you via yeah. or so the, the interesting concept is technically we could set your books up on, on as a selling account um where obviously all those royalties all the payments come to you but I could put that in my TikTok shop and charge a pound commission per book that sells or whatever you dictate how much commission you, you're willing to pay for that seller. And so I can add other authors' books in the UK. Someone okay. buys my book, that order comes straight to you, you fulfil it. I just get commission as a middleman. That's something I haven't I haven't mm. tried, but it's certainly something I think as a community, we've got one that we could very much get something set up. Yeah. In, uh, that sounds like um, a business opportunity for somebody listening to this podcast set themselves yeah, up as, a, it, as an indie bookseller and we just yeah, ship stock to that, that house and that person yeah. spends all day stuffing envelopes and getting a pound a shot no well yeah well no it's us we do the we do the fulfillment so the orders come to us still so again if if, if you sold one of my books from one of your videos i, I could say right i've got 20 pounds per book so james I'll, I'll give you two pounds three pounds for every every book that you sell those orders still to come to me so as long as i make it financially viable for the print oh, costs yes. and packaging yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. i still i still get those so i get a commission where... for doing the sale but you still fulfill it but i, I am so thinking that... about in an ideal world i wouldn't be stuffing envelopes that would be yeah that would be an automated system so that i think that's that's the next step, isn't it? Where the orders, yeah. where you're selling the books, but the orders go through to like ideally Amazon, so, you know, do yeah. our fulfillment yeah. effectively, don't they? But um, yeah, yeah. But I guess they could. Somebody could do that, could they? Could they set themselves up? Well, technically, I, you know, you. The only way, the way I could think about doing it that way is if, for example, you ordered a shipment of author copies but sent them to my address. Yes. And then I add your books to my TikTok shop. Yeah. And then I sell them, and then but there are ways of linking accounts so the books that sell it still the money would go to you. Yeah, it, it is it is a really good system that TikTok has set setting okay. up in the background. 
for the shops. It's that's definitely worth exploring. Definitely worth it. Worth it. And I do author copies. I mean, I fulfil them myself on my website, yeah. as I say. So um, there's, it's an easy step for me to. Um, unfortunately, my daughter's just left home because she was the ideal person to uh, do the fulfilment for me. But my yeah. son, my son's lazy. But um, uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's see if I can set that up on my TikTok account so I can have a go at that as well. Um, well, look, Adam, uh, it's been fantastic fantastic talking to you the time has whipped through we're 40 minutes uh, chatting about this <laughs> yeah. and we've barely scratched the surface and i, I just would yeah. urge people to look at ap beswick on tiktok <laughs> have a look at what you're doing how you're doing it and we will come back and have this chat again because this is a fast developing uh platform yes definitely thank you for having me this is the self-publishing show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. There you go. AP Beswick. He's knocking it out of the park on um, TikTok. And uh, I don't know. I just, you know, I'm really enjoying TikTok. Every time I sort of, I have to leave it for a bit just because I get a bit overwhelmed with other, other stuff. And then I come back to it and I remember how much I enjoy engaging with other people, with the authors. It seems to me it doesn't have so much of the toxic. I'm sure it's all on there, actually. All the toxic stuff is probably there. I just don't see it. Because oh, yeah. TikTok's, TikTok's very good at giving you uh, what it is you're interested in and not much outside of that. Um, and I'm not interested in toxicity. Uh, so I've really enjoyed it. I had a good couple of um, posts this week. I've mixed in a bit of Formula One because I was at a Formula One meeting at the weekend in Italy. And I've ummed and ahed about that because I've always said to people, stay stay in your lane. But actually, aviation and Formula One, they really go so close together. Mm. And it seemed to work quite well. So I'm back on aviation now. And I did um, this week, I did a pure book promotion one. Did something that I've I just, it's kind of an experiment. I, I, I quite high production value. Um, I had a, some black and white archive, which I paid for, by the way. And told a little story about my book and I didn't appear in it. So that's a broke a few of the rules that we tell people, but actually it's done pretty well for something that's just about my book. I think it's got three or 4,000 views so far. And normally the ones about my book are in the hundreds and the ones about military aviation are in the tens of thousands. Um, but that percentage of the, of, you know, two or 3,000, that's book sales for me. So I should report back on how that's done. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, I've been talking to Cecilia Mecca about our various TikTok strategies and approaches. And I don't know if you read Jane Friedman's, uh, one of the guests, mm-hmm. former guests on this uh, podcast, her hot sheet. So she has a small article this week about Coho, Colleen Hoover, who is, before she started on TikTok, or before TikTok started with her books, she had sold 273,000. She's on track this year, I think, for 7.3 million books. And wow. That's that is amazing. the TikTok effect, and she has been an absolute superstar. And according to Lucy, who sort of uh, communicates with her, we're trying to get her on the show, by the way. And if Coho, if you're listening, if Colleen is listening, we would love to have you on the show. Um, and Lucy said it couldn't happen to a nicer person. Um, so really exciting. But uh, we don't all need to sell 7.3 million books, but TikTok can sell a few hundred books for you with, I'm going to say, not too much effort, but with the right effort. Yeah, absolutely. So should we listen to the interview? We've done that. I've done the interview. This is the back anno. Have you we? were off look at, you were looking at your phone whilst the interview was oh. going. Now you've okay. sport the magic now because people assume that we sit here listening to the interview in real time rather than just oh, record a well, top and tail. Yes. No, it's um <laughs> yeah, if we have TikTok, I do you know, I've seen tons and tons of people doing well with it. It's not something that I, I really have time for just because of other stuff, but it's clearly it clearly works for um yeah, you know, romance is definitely the, the the genre that it works best on. But I've seen it work now for lots of other authors in in different genres. And you know, fantasy that's a that's a pretty not necessarily one that you would think would be one that would work with TikTok. But I I have seen Adam doing well. Actually, he did a live last night. Um, yeah. And I kind of I don't know why I very rarely use TikTok. But I just kind of popped on and dropped him a comment. I don't think he knew it was me. I think he, I kind of did a kind of a raised glass emoji and he, I'm not quite sure he, because it's not my name, so it's P-Back Writer when I am. Ah, um, yes. When I'm on that, so he probably didn't know it was me, but I, I, I'm very pleased to see him doing so well. It's, um, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's really, really done well. Well, a lovely guy, and he's actually got a scholarship through Craig Martell to attend uh, 20 Books Vegas. And mm-hmm. I'm doing a presentation on TikTok there, so I've already talked to him about um, combining on that. So I, because I think he's a really good example for the wider yeah. audience outside romance. Of, yeah, uh, definitely. Of, as, a, as am I, because um, I'm also uh, so shifting some books. Okay, I think that's it, Mark. I'm really pleased we've recorded this today because I need to pack that camera into my Peli oh, case. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I was a guy who got Peli cases. So Peli cases, if you don't know what they are, they're very distinctive and you, you'll will recognize them because film crews use them all the time. They're hard plastic. They're brilliant cases. Apparently you can drop them in the sea and they float and they don't leak water. I'm not going to try Let's that. Let's not try that, yeah. But all your cameras and, and filming equipment go in there. And we came back from, we went to the Monza uh, Grand Prix last weekend. We came back at Heathrow and this crew, I suspect were Netflix, the Drive to Survive series, but they came back and honestly, I've never seen so many Peli cases in one place. It was like a pyramid outside the um and there must have been 20 20 30 of those ridiculous but uh, anyway we've got one and a few suitcases and we are bringing all our stuff to nink so we're going to grab some testimonial interviews we're going to grab podcast interviews we're going to record a live edition of the podcast and i'm doing a presentation on tiktok it's going to be a busy week it is going to be a busy week yep no looking forward to it um i should be i'm going to break my peloton streak i've had a kind of a long streak now of a day at least well at least 20 minutes, usually half an hour of exercise every day. But I think I will actually replace that with a run on the beach. Yeah. Which I'm quite looking forward to. And a dive in the sea. That's what you do after your run. I think I've been thinking about mm. this actually because I'm, I'm running quite a lot at the moment. So I think I, I should run on the beach. But am I going to dive in the sea Dawson esque? Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Especially if it's hot. And I think, I mean, uh, I know last week the Dolphins played the Patriots in uh, Florida, so in Miami, not on the other side of the uh, peninsula, but it was um, what, over 100 degrees. Um, over 100 degrees mm. in the shade. I think um, it's going to be, I mean, it's looking like it's going to be more like 85 uh, for us next week. Well, it's been pretty stormy as well this year in Florida and recently, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah storms are great. No, I, I remember having a drink at, on the bar and seeing the lightning over the uh, the Gulf of Mexico, isn't it? That was, um, yes. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool. So bring it yeah. on. Okay, yeah, looking forward to it. Hopefully, if our plane takes off on Monday from Heathrow. Right, that's it. Uh, again, just a reminder, if you're listening to this on the morning of release on the Friday, in the evening, we'll be hosting drinks at St. Pete Beach in Florida. Um, and in the episode that follows, that'll be recorded. The next week's episode will be recorded live in Florida. And um, and after that, we'll give you a, a sense of what it was like at Nink when we, uh, we finally come back to the UK and start chatting again. That is it. Uh, my thanks to Adam Beswick and my congratulations to Adam for the fantastic work he's doing on TikTok. And thank you very much to John and Catherine and Stuart and Tom. Uh, and I've probably left somebody out, the team uh, in the background who make this podcast happen each week. And thank you to you for listening. All that remains for me to say. Is this a goodbye from him? Isn't it time for the interview now? Oh, sorry. And a goodbye from me. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Get show notes, the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash selfpublishingshow. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing. So get your words into the world and join the revolution with The Self-Publishing Show.